Alright, welcome back to another video. Two in one week. Something must be wrong. His wife must have left him. Not yet, anyway. Alright, so today we're going to talk about this project. Look at that. Does that bring back any memories for anybody? does for me. These are lawn darts. If you're under the age of about 30 years old, you're going to have no idea what these things are. And the reason is because they're illegal to sell in these United States of America. But I don't think they're illegal to possess or make. But I'm not... Um, 100% sure? I should have probably checked that before. Alright, so we're on uh, cornell.edu. This apparently is Title 16, Chapter 2, Subchapter C, Part 1500, Section 1500.18. I'm on the wrong one. There we go. We're on the right one now. So this is Title 16, Chapter 2, Subchapter B, Part 1306. This is the ban of hazardous lawn darts, which was effective date of 1988 and applies to all lawn darts in the chain of distribution on or after that date. So the purpose of this ban rule is to prohibit the sale of lawn darts. Huh? Huh? Not, not the manufacture for personal use which have been found to present an unreasonable risk of skull puncture injuries to children. Very good, uh, very good rule, I guess. Um, I don't have children, uh, so, um, yeah, we made lawn darts. Here's a pretty interesting read. I'll leave this uh, down in the description below, but for now, we're going to concentrate on this. So the traditional lawn darts that I grew up with had this kind of form factor. They had a very long shaft, they had uh, this, these large fins, and they actually stopped about right here, and they could move up and down the shaft uh, to kind of give it a little bit more of a, a way that it would enter directly in. So this is a little bit different design, but, you know, still functionally works. The uh, fins are printed out of PLA. Uh, there's an STL available on Thingiverse that you can go ahead and print those out. That is to scale. I printed these on the CR10. Uh, I did three at once, all printing like this. So they were just kind of spaced around. That's why you see a lot of this kind of Z wobble up here because they were all facing like this and it was moving around left to right. So the center shaft is just a 5 16th uh, mild steel rod that you can purchase at the hardware store. I just cut it to length based on the scale that the PLA fins printed and sharpened up the uh, the tip a little bit. The lead portion was a little bit harder to figure out. So what I did for the top nose cone lead portion itself is that's actual lead that I poured, but what I had done is I modeled that up in CAD and I made it uh, kind of reference to pictures that I had found on the interwebs from the old charts. And then I printed it out in PLA. I then molded a silicone two-part mold around that PLA positive um, buck form of it. And then I poured in molten lead with a Lee pouring pot uh, with the 5 16th mild steel dowel inside the mold already and before i did that i actually scraped out a little bit of the mild steel where the lead was going to be poured so that way the lead would creep into those grinding marks on the steel shaft and that would keep the lead nose cone stationary pouring the lead was a little bit difficult i used mold max 60 uh, smooth on product silicone and it's rated for uh, a little bit less than what the lead 
melting temperature is, but it seemed to hold up fine and actually did cast some very good parts. I did three of these um, just for kind of a test and they all adhered really well to the shaft. The cool part about that is if you do mess up or you want to reuse that shaft, you don't want that lead on there, you can reheat it and melt that lead off. So that's pretty pretty handy feature of lead, of course. Always a disclaimer with using lead, it's a, it's a couple different things. You don't want it to off-gas at all, so you don't want to boil the lead in any way, shape, or form. You want to just bring it to a melt. That's why the Lee Pour Pot is really a nice feature, uh, a nice piece of equipment to have. It keeps you in check. You don't overheat your lead at all. Also, it's molten metal, right? So basic safety concerns, use a face shield, uh, use it in well-ventilated area. I opened up my garage on both sides and I had a nice breeze going in there and then offset towards the door so uh, I wouldn't be breathing in those fumes consistently. Also, with molten metals, you got to watch out for whatever mold you're using, right? Because that may burn, that may off gas or something. So it's important to just be safe, responsible, and always, uh, you know, if you're going to do this, which, you know, I would never recommend. So I found what thread pattern the cap nuts were, and I just used a die to thread the actual shaft itself. So that's threaded, and then you can just put the nut on there, and it keeps the fins on there quite well. So in addition to that, I wanted to stop any shock issues when it either gets thrown or when it hits the ground. I didn't want the shock to just immediately uh, break the PLA. So what I ended up doing was I printed out some flexible filament kind of buffers in here. They're little shock absorbers. And those go right here and right here. They're just circular discs at 5 16 And they stop the uh, shock from reaching into the PLA itself. So I think that helped quite a bit as well. There are a few major problems with uh, the design and how it turned out. Um, this lead is actually way too heavy for this design and the back extends way too much so when i modeled my design and i put the pla in i just didn't take into account that this would extend past almost past the center of gravity on the dart so what happens is it doesn't have this nice nose forward like i had anticipated it's more of this kind of straight it does work you can get it to stick in the ground and you can be moderately accurate with it but you know so that's really the only gripe with it. All the rest of the processes uh, seem to work out really well. And uh, I just think it's funny. My neighbor got a kick out of it, thought it was great. And so this is kind of one way you can bring back a little bit of your childhood, I think. I think a lot of people miss lawn darts and you try and buy the ones without the pointed ends, you know, at the big box stores. And it's just not the same. I will throw the STL link uh, for the fins down in the description below. You might want to modify those a little bit. This is kind of a little large from what I remember, but then again, when I remember this, I was, you know, a smaller child, right? So to me, maybe this is the correct size, and it was just really huge for me at that point in my life. But at any rate, if you did want to do something like this, um, I can't recommend it in any way, shape, or form. But I will provide links for the STL for the uh, the fins there. And if you would like to do that, that is not my recommendation at all. Hopefully you did enjoy it. So if you did, leave a like. Maybe uh, think about uh, dropping a comment down there. Love to hear from you. If you've made uh, similar lawn darts yourself, maybe not with a 3D printer, maybe you poured them out of your own plastic or you came up with a way to make them. I've seen a couple people do it with uh, soda bottles on the Internet. So there's way different ways to do this. This is just my way. So hopefully it was interesting to you, entertaining. Maybe feel like subscribing because I would feel like allowing you to do that. I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I could come to terms with it. Till the next one, keep your amps up and your filament dry.